on down to verse 17. Peter was very perplexed. What could this vision mean? He just had this picnic with God that he rejected. Just then the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I'm the man you're looking for. Why have you come? They said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout, God-fearing man, well respected by the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night the next day, he went with them, accompanied by some, some of the brothers from Joppa. Now, Peter's perplexed. Peter's trying to figure all this out. Because, like I said, he finds himself in this world at the time where they're trying to understand what it means to be a Christian. They think it means to be a Jew first, and then you can be a Christian after that. And, and that's still where he lives. You've got to wonder, too, or at least I have to wonder, reading through this, if Peter doesn't have this moment of, oh, these guys are obviously unclean. These guys are Gentiles and they're here at my house. This is what this vision was about. I'll invite them into this house, which is something that's a little taboo, and I'll start to break that down. Maybe that's where it's going to end. Maybe I invite you in, I come with you, I preach to you, I go home, and, and we're good to go. I think that every step of the way, Peter had to have this wondering moment in his head where he said, is this where you're pushing me, God? Is this where you're pushing me, God? Is this where you're pushing me? You said this is unclean, and now you're saying this is clean. But what does that really mean? How clean is clean? <clears throat> Back at verse 24, they arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. This Cornelius guy just cracks me up. He's got to be just party always happening, friends always over, sharing and loving and inviting. I mean, he's obviously really well known. And here he is, this guy is coming in and he invites somebody into his house. And he invites all of his friends and neighbors and says, this is going to happen and I want you to be there for it. Anyway, as Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up, I am a human being just like you. And I'm, I'm going to stop there for a minute, because this is an important thing for us to notice, for, for us to pay attention to. There are things, there are things that even as a God-fearing person, Cornelius still has remnants of the culture in which he lives. People can be worshipped in this culture. Idols can be worshipped in this culture. And Cornelius has, has this background that he's lived his in, entire life, and here he is with this vision from an angel to seek out this guy who comes in. He must be holy, so he bows down and worships him. Cornelius has to still learn what it means to walk this new path. That this is a new thing, that we don't worship people anymore. We don't worship idols anymore. If we're going to be serious about following Christ, then, then what that means is getting up out of that comfortable place, going out into a world full of sinful people, and talking to them about Jesus. And the next step after that is, we have to be ready for some of the remnants of the culture in which they've lived. Christ will change us instantly. You know that. You've been there. You've done that. But people living out there in the, in the world, people who haven't grown up in the church, people who are experiencing these things for, for a first time, don't always know the rules of church. I, I worked in, when I was in college, one of the first ch churches that I worked in was actually a church plant. 
And, and there were prayer meetings that we would have where every once in a while somebody would let loose with a curse word. And, and it was this exciting moment for them. It was, it was they, they were not doing something bad. It was not out of, an, out of a poor explanation. They were excited about something, and it was like a heck yeah, uh, that, that Jesus was doing something in their life. We have to be ready as Christians to experience something like that. We have to be ready for somebody to go out for a smoke break in the middle of the sermon. If we are serious about seeking the lost, about bringing sinners into a saving relationship with Christ, then we have to be ready for those people to go through the process of learning what it means to be a Christian. We have to be ready for Cornelius to, jump, to fall to his feet and, sit and try to worship us. So that we can say, no, 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 no. I am not Jesus. Jesus is Jesus. And he will make you.